Um, why don't we get started? Uh, thank you to everyone for joining us for the advanced training series. My name is Tara Jensen, and I am the project manager for MET Plus and lead a, a team of uh, a large team of very talented staff um, on uh, developing MET Plus. Um, so first off, I'm going to go over some logistics and then um, just do kind of a, a brief introduction to MET Plus, and then um, we will jump into um, demonstrating on the cloud. So there we go, logistics. Okay, so just um, some ground rules. Um, you know, please keep yourself muted and um, turn off your videos unless you're um, asking questions. You don't have to turn on your video when you're asking a question, but if um, if you'd like to, um, it's always nice to put a, a face with a name. Um, and if you do have those questions, feel free to go ahead and, and raise your hand um, or post it in chat. Um, we'll also be recording chat. Um, so and making that chat log available. Um, so you know, feel free to to you know get your questions answered there, and then that way you can refer back to it, and, and maybe other people can refer to those questions. Um, and then finally, um, I don't think I really need to say this, other than it's kind of required. Is um, you know, please be courteous and respectful with your questions, and I can't imagine that people wouldn't be because um, we're a great community. I think. Um, and finally, note that um, these sessions are being recorded, so please know that your image, um, if you were to turn on your um, video and your voice, are being recorded um, if you ask a question. So um, by doing so, you're uh, agreeing to being recorded. Um, just really quickly, in case you really haven't um, dealt much with Google Meet, um, you know, uh, it, Right now, you're looking at a screen, and um, you'll see, you know, the navigation um, down at the bottom of the screen. Um, if you were to to look at this more closely, um, you have um, your mute and um, camera on off here. If you want to turn on closed captioning, uh, you know, you can do that with the CC button here. Um, you can raise and lower your hand with the, the hand symbol. Um, and then if, if, uh, if for some reason um, you wind up feeling like you, uh, we need to see your, your screen and, and you want to share your screen, that's the little up arrow. Um, <clears throat> and then there's more options as well. Um, and then if you want to leave the meeting, you can do that. And then over on the, the um, far right side, um, you can see who else is um, participating as well as see their chat, you know, see the chat log. Um, uh, by clicking on the little text box. So let's see what else. Um, for today's agenda, uh, we're going to do a brief introduction, uh, and then we're going to have Hank Fisher show us the basics of working in the cloud. The goal of this session is to, to really try and, and give folks um, who haven't used uh, MET Plus that much, um, but want to be able to use it in order to evaluate the, the prototypes, the uni Unified Forecast System prototypes, especially for GFS and GEFS, um, you know, to, to learn how to do that um, in the cloud. Um, and then uh, we'll be ta talking about how to evaluate prototy prototypes um, that are stored on, on the NOAA Big Data Program um, portion of the cloud using GridStat. However, one caveat, uh, the procedures that we've used in the past to connect to the NOAA Big Data um, Program have uh, apparently changed. And uh, so we're in the process of trying to debug um, how to connect to, um, to the e um, ERA-5 data on um, the NOAA Big Data Program. But um, if anyone on this call um, has successfully done that in um, within the like the past week or two, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to us and let us know. Um, or while we're in, in our session, maybe you can help us um, debug potentially um, the the the, um, the problem that we're seeing. Uh, so um, right now, the backup plan is to to do the demonstration. Um, with the tutorial data, but we will show you how to configure and how to, um, you know, uh, pull the, the data from the NOAA Big Data um, program to the best of our ability. After using GridStat, showing you how to just basically use GridStat, then we'll take a, a brief break. Um, so I'll be approximately an hour and 15 minutes into the session. Uh, and then um, we'll go back to looking at how you can use um, 
uh, the prototypes um, using series analysis. Apparently, I did a copy and paste and, and forgot to correct this, so this should say series analysis. I'll get that corrected in the slides before we post them. Um, and uh, myself and um, Hank and Tina Kalb um, will be resources for um, for asking questions. Uh, we also have other um, members of our team um, on the call, such as uh, Julie Prostopnik and John Halley Gotway, and I haven't even looked to see who else is, is here and so forth. And then um, to wrap up, we'll talk about um, some of the other tools that could be useful for evaluating prototypes. But um, once again, uh, due to the, the um, two hour time period, we won't be able to, to go into those at this point, um, but we will be going into some of those um, in later sessions. So then the next two sessions, we have one on May 3rd, um, that's uh, talking more specifically about S2S metrics. Uh, and we have Jana Infante and um, Justin Hicks from Climate Prediction Center. They'll be de demonstrating how they use MetPlus. Um, and then Tina Kelb from NCAR um, will be demonstrating um, some of the S2S diagno diagnostics that have been contributed to MetPlus by the community. Um, and then um, two weeks later, on May 17th, we're, we're going to give um, demonstrations of how to do assessment of some of the component models um, when you're talking about a coupled model system. So John Opatz is going to show some of the um, capability that we have um, that is very tailored to marine and cryosphere verification. Um, and then a uh, guest lecture to still be determined, um, demonstrating how to do some um, verification of aerosols. So. Uh, and then I just want to point out that um, these sessions are primarily um, supported uh, through the, the DTC um, and, and via the UFS R2O project. So, and then also everything that we're demonstrating in the cloud um, can also be um, performed on your local or community system install using the um, basically the tutorial um, data that, that we have provided. Oh. Need to update the um, the name of the data program to NOAA Open Data Dissemination Program. Thank you for that um, correction, Krishna. So, um, so what is MetPlus? Um, hopefully, by now you know this. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time um, going into it, other than you know just kind of hitting the highlights. But basically, MetPlus is a suite of verification and diagnostic tools that are wrapped in Python. Um, they have a lot of configuration files in them to make it easy to um, reproduce your verification um, or your diagnostics over and over again. And then the Python is intended to make it, um, you know, to provide like low level workflow as well as more flexibility um, within the, the um, framework itself. So we have support for traditional statistics, a lot of spatial methods, and then other diagnostic tools that are included in MetPlus. Um, and this package has grown basically over the past 15 years of its existence um, to encompass a, a, a quite an arsenal of, of capability. Um, some of you have probably seen this slide. Um, basically, uh, it just summarizes a lot of what I just said, um, just pointing out that we have over 150 traditional statistics um, and diagnostic methods for both point data and gridded data sets. There's 15 interpolation methods right now for um, spatial you know, um, interpolation. Um, vertical interpolation is done um, basically um, either through linear or log um, interpolation, depending on um, which field you're using, whether you're using height or pressure. Um, and uh, it has been applied to so many spatial and temporal scales, everything from, you know, 5, 10, 15 minute um, renewable energy um, forecasts all the way out to climate, multi-decadal climate um, simulations. Um, and I already mentioned the config files that allow for re reproducible results. Um, here is uh, basically the, the, the um, flow chart or the icon for MetPlus, where um, it shows that basically MetPlus is a connection of a lot of the different components um, for um, computing statistics and doing analysis and so forth. Um, and then the, the MetPlus wrappers, the Python wrappers around everything are kind of basically embedded in all these black arrows um, showing that um, it helps move data from, you know, one component um, to another um, through um, either ASCII or NetCDF um, files and so forth. And then down here in the, the lower um, right-hand corner are just some examples of um, advanced um, techniques that, that are available beyond just computing root mean square error or um, uh, 
uh, um, anomaly correlation and, and so forth. Um, one of the benchmarks for MetPlus um, continues to be the object-based methods um, that we have available in our tool um, set, as well as um, scorecarding and being able to compute things on, um, using uh, at every grid point so you can see the spatial um, representation of the errors using series analysis and, and um, using our analysis suite to compute things like performance diagrams and so forth. Um, so diving into it just a little bit more deeply, um, just uh, wanted to point out um, who the folks are that are um, routinely working on MetPlus. Um, we have a, a, a mix of um, engineering, science, statistics, and then um, management. Um, and then I, our engineering team is, is kind of broken down by um, which core component um, they're working on. There's um, uh, quite, a, you know, there's um, several that are working on the core MET tools that compute the statistics. Um, and then we have a couple engineers that are working on the MET plus wrappers and just kind of pulling the whole framework together. And then there's the MET plus analysis suite, which is comprised of five different components. And that's why we're calling it the MET plus analysis suite because it makes it a little bit easier to think of. Um, so basically there are two um, user interfaces, um, MET viewer and MET express. And underpinning those two um, user interfaces that allow for, um, you know, analysis um, that is driven by databases, there are um, three other components. There's um, Met Data IO. This should say Met Data IO. Um, outdated um, figure. Sorry about that. Um, and then Met CalcPy and Met PlotPy. So Met Data IO does um, all the um, ingest and, and output. So um, IO. Um, capability, um, both putting things into a database as well as just handling um, things from the command line. MetCalcPy does what it kind of says. It, it does all the calculations, all the aggregations um, of the statistics um, and, uh, you know, computation of um, some of the, the additional diagnostic fields that are needed and so forth. And then MetPlotPy does the plotting. So we have a, a, um, a host of um, engineers that, that work on that as well. Um, and then we like to couple our development um, uh, an engineer with at least one scientist so that the, the development is driven by the scientific needs. And so um, we have a, um, you know, quite a few um, scientists both from both NCAR and um, NOAA and GSL, um, which are the two primary nodes of the Developmental Test Bed Center. Um, and then our statisticians, Eric Gilliland and Barb Brown, um, consult and, and um, contribute um, when we need them to. Um, so then, uh, also just talking about the community, um, it is an international community. We have um, core contributors from um, NCAR, from um, lots of aspects of NOAA, um, the Met Office, and and therefore the um, the Unified Modeling um, Community um, that is associated um, with uh, with the UM work, um, Naval Research Lab, U.S. Air Force. Um, we've recently been spending more time talking to the Australian Bureau of Meteorology. I know that there is a, a lot of folks um, um, at, at in, in India at the Medium Range Weather Forecast Office there um, that are, um, you know, working with um, MetPlus routinely. We do have governance meetings um, every week that right now are comprised of um, the, the five organizations that are listed here. And we're looking to add um, the Australian Bureau of Meteorology um, to that. So that will make it a very interesting um, range of time zones that we're trying to, um, to have a meeting um, during. Um, we do have, you know, online training um, and our, all of our, and as well as contributor guides. And then um, our, our users guides as well. I, here's a laundry list of all of the different repositories for each component of MetPlus. Um, in GitHub, um, and then we do use, um, you know, continuous integration testing um, uh, for our pull requests. We have cybersecurity screening um, for MetPlus. So if this is something going on an operational system, um, there's a, a fair amount of um, cybersecurity um, focus at this time. That's courtesy of, of the Air Force um, requiring that. And then um, we do have a lot of sample data as well. Um, so if you need to, to get help, um, you know, just pointing out that there are user's guides um, for every component. 
Um, here's an example of um, going in and trying to find um, examples of, of how to run um, some of the diagnostics for subseasonal to seasonal. Um, you go into MET Plus and then you'd go to the section um, that's MET Plus use cases. Um, we have two sections under there. There are um, use cases are the examples of how to run the tools. And so, um, so there's examples on, of just how to run the MET Plus tools. And then there's examples that are focused more on how to run verification or diagnostics for a particular model application. And, and so that's where um, subseasonal to seasonal is, is defined as you know, one of those applications. So you can go in and, and um, find the, the use cases, which include sample data, um, the configuration um, settings for running MetPlus, um, and uh, you know, a description of, of what it's doing. Um, uh, on the on Met Plus um, in the user's guide. Additionally, there is the um, the discussions page. So if you need help, um, you can go ahead and, and um, submit your um, your request for help um, via Met Plus um, GitHub discussions. Um, the links are actually in kind of a green color here, so I'm going to have to make those more white um, so you can actually see them. Um, but basically, uh, you do have to have a GitHub um, user ID um, to, to um, post to discussions. Um, and then typically, we leave those discussions um, uh, open for 24 hours, hoping, you know, in, in hopes that the community can um, contribute, <clears throat> excuse me, assistance. Um, and if, it, if the community does not um, contribute assistance, then, then we um, come in um, with our MetPlus team and, um, and, and uh, help with the, um, answering the, the questions and so forth. So um, once you become comfortable with using MetPlus for certain aspects of things, we encourage you to go ahead and jump in and help out with um, answering questions for discussions. All right, I've apparently been talking too long. Oh, anyway, um, so uh, as far as training resources go, um, the previous training series is um, is uh, still on the web, and it has all of the basics. It's got 20 um, one-hour sessions looking at a lot of the different tools and how to run them. Um, so if if you feel like you're, um, you would like to know more information about these advanced techniques that we're using now, you can... Um, take a step back and go to the, the session um, that we ran in 2021 through 2022 um, to learn more about the, the, um, the tools and so forth. Um, there, um, all of this is focused on using the MET Plus online tutorial. So there's a link to that here. I already pointed out the user's guides and then um, the discussions forum. So there's, there's um, lots of opportunities for help. And then I also wanted to point out that there are um, installations available to the community, primarily um, to the US um, community. Um, we have um, uh, installations on NCAR machines, on um, several of the NOAA machines, a few community machines. Um, uh, we do have MetPlus um, in Docker, um, both um, Docker, and now we're working towards completing um, uh, uh, installation in Singularity, and then the, um, the information about how to access things um, on the, the Amazon web service. So you can get, get to all that information if you go to um, the downloads page and then um, go to the um, existing builds. So at this point, just really quick, do you, um, does anyone have any questions? Um, while um, Hank is getting ready to, to um, start using, showing us how to use um, the, the cloud. Okay, well, if you do have questions, feel free to pop those into the, um, the chat. And seriously, no question is um, a, a dumb question. That we're, we're here to try and, and help you know, clarify how to, how to use MetPlus and so forth. So feel free to use the chat. We're, we're here to, to help and answer questions. So I'm gonna stop presenting and hand it over to Hank. Hi, everybody. Um, let's see. I can do this correctly. All right, fantastic. Um, 
Uh, so I'm Hank Fisher. Uh, I'm a software engineer at uh, NCAR um, and uh, obviously work on the Met Plus team. So let's talk about um, how to get Met Plus running in the cloud. Um, I will say that one of the benefits of the cloud as we go along, you, you can see that, is that it comes with data. So it comes with tutorial data and it comes with the um, as I now know, the open data dissemination program data um, and little real-time slide editing. Um, but I think that's the real power of the um, cloud version of Met Plus is that um, it, it comes with this, this you know, rich data set that um, is hopefully fairly useful. So um, what I'm going to do is um, we, we've set up our met plus aws instances to be as cheap as possible i will um do most of this with my um personal aws account using all free tier type of instances just to so um it, it, anyone can do this like students can do this um people with um, very small budgets can do this you get a certain amount of hours of free time free aws time and we, we've set this up so that you can take advantage of this so all of this as we go along um, i will show you um, how we do it with uh, my free account um, so first step is to log into the dashboard um, i won't show you that step um, it's pretty easy to do. Once you sign up for the AWS, you get a dashboard. Um, and then um, let's see if I have a screenshot of that. Um, so the dashboard, when you first log in, will look like this. And you're going to want to click on this um, grid up to the top left um, that says services. So it will look a lot like this when you pull down the services. Um, what we are doing is um, running EC2 instances, which is just it stands for Elastic Computing in, in the cloud. So if we click on the EC2, um, it comes up with um, basically this dashboard. Um, you can see all of these boxes. I don't have any instances running, or at least it will show me that eventually. Um, and um, there, I don't have anything going right now, um, mainly because I'm on the free tier and that would eventually cost money. Um, the other keys that you want to note, so here's my um, mostly non-professional personal username. Um, the, one of the keys to doing this, which are in the slides, is you need to be in this US East um, area. Uh, Northern Virginia, because that is where our AMIs are. There's no restrictions to areas. Um, when you you um, create your account, you can log into any of these. Um, but when we create our AMIs, we are limited to one right now. Um, it, we might be able to pay for doing more than one, but um, since everybody has access to this Northern Virginia, it's um, where you have to go to find the AMI. So. Um, there is the dashboard. So Ben, um, I guess the answer to that is, um, if you, uh, probably what you want, you if you wanna follow along, you're welcome to. I, I think that what I'm doing is just showing how to get this started um, and you can refer to it in the future via the recordings or whatever to get going. Um, I think this first part, which is the advanced part, is just to um, give a demonstration. If you or your project or your institution wants to get going in the cloud, or personally, this is how to do it. I don't think you need to follow along because I gave you the end of this demonstration, which are um, the EC2 instances that you can log into. So if you want to follow along, you're welcome to, but um, I don't think it's necessary. OK, so let's see back to this. Um, so right, so we logged in. We made sure our uh, region is Northern Virginia. 
Um, and then um, I showed you where the drop down menus for EC2 instances are. Um, there's a screenshot. So now what we want to do is um, go find a, an Amazon machine image. Um, so that is what these what the AMI stands for in your EC2 dashboard on the left down here, um, you will see um, images. So there's a catalog. I usually just go to AMI. Um, so I cheated already um, and did a search. But what you want to do is you want to go to this search box and just type in Met Plus and see what comes up. And so we have the 4.1 Met Plus image. We have the 4.1 tutorial. The difference between those is just the tutorial data. Um, we've got the 5.1. Oh, one, I, it looks like I have two 5.01 tutorials. Um, I suspect the one I created this morning is more accurate, so we're gonna go use that. But when you type Met Plus, you should see all of these images and um, hopefully they'll be labeled so that they are, um, you know, e easy to understand and figure out which one you wanna do. So, um, now, um, and you can obviously search for other AMIs. There's a, there's a huge variety of AMIs you can use on, on Amazon Web Services, but we want to do this one. So I'm going to click this, and then I'm going to say launch instance from AMI. So we're just going to do that. Um, and it will then bring up another menu. And so um, I will say just from personal experience, you definitely want to give it a name um, so that you don't um, get confused. And I'm just going to do something silly like I don't know why this is uh, going so slowly. I think while you're um, typing or, or whatever, Cigar is asking, can you share the directory in Linux for this? Does that question make sense? So um, I maybe I don't understand completely, um, Cigar. So um, what directory would you are you referring to? So um, we will certainly. Yes, the Met is installed in EC2. Um, and once we're done with this, I will log in and show you where everything is located, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. Okay, great. Fantastic. Um, okay, so I'm giving my, um, my EC2 instance a name. Um, and then everything else, I think you can just take as given. Um, because, like I said, we've we've tried to structure this so that it's all free tier based. Um, we've got a T2 micro, which um, seems to be fast enough to do just about everything we want. Um, there are network settings you don't have to um, change. I will I will point one out um, that will be sort of important. Um, but then this key pair. So this key pair login. Um, I only have one key pair um, associated with my personal account, which makes sense. Um, but this key pair login, you, you you won't have a choice. You'll have to create a key pair. Amazon walks you through it. If you don't have one, um, it's pretty easy. And then you just choose one. You can have different key pairs, but it's a little out of the scope of this. So just um, assume that um, I have, you will have a key pair. It'll be saved somewhere in a directory on your laptop or whatever machine you're using. And you use that to access the EC2 instance. So um, here is the one where uh, this allow SSH traffic from. I will encourage you to either choose custom, which you can choose a block of IPs, or my IP, um, but for now, um, I'm just gonna do it from anywhere. So this means that I can access this EC2 instance from any machine that I want. I have some res you know, restrictions are better for security. Um, you always wanna limit it, but for ease and to get around potential problems, I'm just gonna use anywhere for right now. And of course, Amazon warns you about that, so. 
Um, and um, all of this is great. Uh, Amazon also tells you um, free tier eligible customers, like how much you get. We have structured it again so that um, 30 gigabytes is the max for free and we will you know, use it all. Um, number of instances, you're only gonna want one. Um, I will show you uh, my um, work AWS account where I launched many more than one, um, but one is how you want to do it. And then you just hit launch instance. And of course you get a little feedback. It says successful. And so what I usually do is um, you can either click on this or we'll just show you how the dashboard looks. So we're back to the dashboard. Um, this should say eventually say one running. So maybe we can go look at that, click on that and see. Um, it looks like it's up. I think that display just didn't um, just didn't uh, update as fast as I wanted to. Um, but here's your uh, maybe if I refresh, see what happens. Um, If you have more than one instance, if you have um, other things, um, one of the keys here is you'll have instances one, that means you have um, an EC2 ready to go. And then this instance running means that it's actually running. So you get charged for, um, it's all free tier, so you don't really, um, but you would get charged for things running and you get to charge a tiny amount for having an instance available to be run. Um, but it's, it, you know, on the free tier, it doesn't turn in. So we have launched our um, EC2 instance. So we have a virtual machine running in the cloud. Um, and uh, let me go show, All right? So now we've done that, we've done the MAD left column, public drop down menu, and then search on that plus. Um, that's the images um, screen that we showed. Um, we've done all of that launching images, um, choosing the processor data and giving it a name. Definitely give it a name, but just take the defaults for processors and data. Um, and then, you know, do your um, public key. So here's another summary of what happens when you get the, um, uh, the EC2 image launched. Um, here's... Uh, it, if you get to the point where the T2 micro is not um, powerful enough, fast enough to run what you want to run, then you have uh, a huge variety of things you can choose from, you know, all of which Amazon likes to charge more for. Um, but just know that if, if it's too slow or if you know, something isn't working, then you can um, certainly upgrade the processor type. Um, so now we have a, we have something running. So now what do we do with it, right? So we're gonna connect to this. We're gonna click on this um, and here's the summary. And what you wanna do is, this is your key you can do a couple things. So let's see, you can type this, you can hit this connect tab and it will show you, um, yeah, this is kind of funny that they keep, keep saying root. So in most cases, the default username is root. Um, however, the default that I've always seen is, is admin. So um, just note that that will probably be admin. Um, and I think that, um, Amazon tells you that. So let's, um, so this will tell you the public IP address, um, instant ID, but if we click on this SSH client, it says how to connect to um, this particular um, EC2, running EC2 instance. It gives you this long, this is the, um, let's see, this is, yeah. So this is, this is the very long, um, fully qualified address. You can just use the IP address if you like. So let's just go do that. So we have this IP address. 
Um, and now this will look familiar to um, most um, Linux users. So I have an SSH directory. I have a Hank personal AWS.pem. And so all I have to do is um, use, sorry, um, this. Um, this is the key that you set up um, that created it. And then um, give it the IP address. And I will say, and I need to update the slides, but um, it should be admin. Oops. Let's see how this goes. Oh, that did not work. Why would that not work? Oh, bad permissions. Sorry, I tried this, but um, and it. So, funny enough, if you do the SSH client, it tells you um, that that's probably going to be an issue. So I should have done that to begin with. So let's go. Let's go do that. And of course, um, that was much better. So that is, um, you have now launched an EC2 instance with MetPlus installed um, and connected to it. Let me add one more thing. So that's the admin user. So the admin user um, for your EC2 instance is um, has root privileges, so you can sudo and and add software you can do anything you want to this ec2 instance because it's all yours you've launched it in your um, aws space um, you have total control of it i will note that um, if you launch the tutorial version of met plus there is also um, uh, another user so there's a there's a user ec2 user which You've all got an email on how to um, log into your own um, EC2 instances. And this, so there's an EC2 user on every one of the tutorial AMIs. Like if you launch the AMI, this is how um, pretty much anybody um, can get into your um, tutorial EC2 instance because I put an EC2 user in there with a default password. Um, so when you do, when, if you do cloud work with MetPlus, choose the MetPlus AMIs without the tutorial on the end because I won't have the EC2 user logged in there. Um, but if you do the tutorial, you can have, you can share with other people. They can log in with the tutorial. You can change this password using the admin user. Um, and um, again, you have total control, but just note that there is an EC2 user with a default password on your EC2 instance if you use our tutorial AMI. Um, so let's, yeah, go ahead. So just really quickly, Hank, um, first off, um, oh yeah, now it's a little bit bigger. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> I figured it was getting really small. Um, so, so we do have questions going back and forth in the chat about why you're showing people this, um, and you know, we're we're trying. Uh, we just want to be clear that basically, we're, what we're trying to do is give give people the tools to be able to use to go and pick up um, and use the AMI that's sitting there and, and get it set up um, outside of this tutorial. But yes. I also just want to take a, a really quick. Um, give a uh, break to give people are people um following what hank is is going through is he going through it at a, at a good pace or does he need to slow down a little got a thumbs up from one person that's good thank you ashley yeah okay it seems like you're going at about the right pace yeah so, so thank you with with all these tutorials, I think that um, you know the recordings are going to be valuable. 
um, it, it's really just a, a hopefully a, a one-stop shop so that at some point somebody says, let's do Met Plus in the cloud, you you know where to start and, and get going um, and you know can do your own thing. So um, let me do, let me just run through um, a few more um, yeah, pointing things out. We're, we're going to obviously get more in depth um, when we um, do the next part, which is grid stat. But let's just take a look at where everything is installed. I think that um, Sagar wanted to, um, hopefully I'm pronouncing your name right, Sagar. Um, but this is, um, I think this is what he wanted. So here's our, um, I think, so I'm logged in as EC2 user. Um, there's nothing in its home directory. Every, all of Met is installed in Opt. So we have, um, I probably, it looks like I probably need to do some cleanup. We have the 4.1 Met still in there. We have 11.0, 4.1 Met Plus um, in there, which is the unified release. Um, I installed 11.0.0 to start with. Um, currently we're running 11.0.2 for Met version um, in general. Um, but this is where this is where all the software is getting installed. So we've got Tomcat to support Met Viewer. Um, we've got some Met Plus directories. We've got CalPy, PlotPy, the, the analysis suite. And then in bin is where all of the Met executables are um, um, stored and um, installed. Um, so that'll be the same if you run your own EC2 instance. Um, that's that's where everything is going to live is in opt. So, um, yeah, uh, that's great, Ben. I I do talk fast, um, and so um, I guess it, it's good. I, it, you know, like I said, hopefully this is a, a starting point, and then you can certainly ask questions if you run into trouble when you're trying to do it on your own. Um, and then the only other directory that's probably um, of note is D1. Um, so D1 is where we put all of the, the data. We've got some Met Plus tutorial setup scripts there. Um, and, um, you know, some, some useful things that are referenced in the online tutorial documentation. Um, you will need some of those issues. Um, we have in projects, we have all of the um, Met Plus data um, that is uh, necessary for the tutorial. So all of your all of the tutorial um, chunks um, will refer to this kind of data. And then finally, um, we have um, sort of more sort of like I said, the, the strength of this AWS, and of course I need to, um, I probably need to uh, rename that directory um, from the big data project to what Krishna said. Um, but this is this is really the, the strength of the cloud part because um, Noah has put all of this data onto um, AD, AWS S3 buckets and we can mount and access all of this from this tutorial um ada ami um so let's just let's just um take a quick look um so you know those of you who have used this information uh, it's probably like super familiar but um we'll just kind of go through so these are all the grid files for um there um and Again, so much data, you probably won't know what to do with it. So in this big data project, I have mounted, um, looks like seven, but it's actually six because UFS and UFS.S2S is the same. Um, another piece of cleanup that I, that I probably need to do. Um, one more thing for this cloud tutorial, because this is sort of the strength, um, let's go take a look on how we might add um, another big data project data, um, data store. So let's see, we've gotten through all that. 
So here are the ones that have preloaded. Um, I think my example is, um, let's see if we can go take a look at the, oh, that is not what I wanted to do, sorry. Um, that is the, sorry, that's the tutorial data. Um, and just a couple of examples, you can look at this in the slides later. Um, the EC2 instance has W get loaded, so you can W get any data set that is available on the web. So you can put your own data on the web and pull it into that EC2 instance. Um, obviously, you only have 30 gigabytes of data space. Um, I think that with the Met Plus tutorial data, we are using um we're using about 20 out of the 30 so you have 10 gigs of your own data that you can um you know download and and keep using still in the free tier um this is this is really what i want to um focus on is um let's go take a look um probably all of you have seen this but here is a big list of um data that I is still being added to um, for the big data project. So all of these are available um, to this uh, EC2 instance. So we can, um, yeah, probably that's probably unreadable. It is. Yep. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> um, yeah, so all of these data sets are available as EC2 instance. And let's just take a quick um, go through how to add another one. Um, I think I've already added this one, but I'm going to go through the example anyway, um, just to show you like where to go. So let's just, let's see, let's just click on this. It'll give you some more data. So it says the resources, it says S3 bucket, and then Amazon resource name is what you are looking for so we're just going to copy that um we are going to go back into let's let me do the slide first sorry so etsy fs tab and those of you who are not system administrators which i doubt any of us are um may or may not have have ever worked with this um but um this is the file that you want to do. And this is also, um, you can only do this as the admin user. So I will need to log out of my EC2 user and go into admin, which is as easy as just changing. Um, so for that, it, yeah, one more thing to note, um, for the EC2 user, there is a password to get into the account. For the admin, you have to use your um, your key, your Amazon key um, to get in. There's no way to get in as password. You have to have your key. So if you lose that key, you will lose access to that EC2 instance that you've launched. That might not be a bad thing. You can just kill it, start a new one with a new key that you haven't lost. Um, but if you lose that key, then you're you're never going to be able to lock in as admin to that instance. Okay, so let's go to Etsy. Um, let's do a VI. Let's see. I think so. Here are all of the. Um, so here are yeah. So here are all of the Node Big Data projects. All I would suggest is to just copy the line, um, just like that, and then add in what you want. So that is the piece that I just copied from um, the website. And the, whoops. Uh, the operable piece is this noaofs.pds. And you can see that right there um, is where that comes into account. So this is the this is the, the piece you get from the website if you want to add another 
data set. And then here is where you want to mount it onto your EC2 instance. So this is a directory on the on the EC2 that you will have to create, and then you'll be able to mount it. Um, I am not going to do that because I already have OFS mounted, but let's go take a look. So here are the directories. Um, you do need to create that. You know, you need to create a new directory and then mount it into the directory, and then you've got a whole new data set that you can play with. So, sorry to, to intervene here, um, but I, I know that you had said that you were struggling with um, the ERA5, the ERA5 data. Is, is so, that at this point is um, making the the mount, or is there something else going on? So the, the, yeah, so the data is available. Um, what I was struggling with was um, a, a thing, and with John is it. This may be this may not be CF compliant NetCDF, um, or I may have, um, and we can go through that for the grid step. We'll do a we'll do a live demo that that might fail, but um, yeah, I was just having trouble reading the data. Oh, um, okay. You know, to make it so yeah, so all all of the data you know, is still there and you can still access it, so. Okay, yep. all right. Um, all right, so let me take one more glance at my slides. I think that's the last slide that I have. Um, like I said, these are the directions to add the new, um, and I uh, will change that name from Big Data Project to uh, what we now know it is. Um, but yeah, so that's, you know, my, my one last plug is the, the, the power of these AWS um, cloud versions are that they come with data. Um, I know many of you have your own data that you want to work with, but um, it, it's it's pretty cool that you can you know, sort out of the data now. So um, now any questions that we haven't already asked? And thank you for listening to that. While people are thinking of their questions, and I, I would suggest if, if you have any, please feel free to, to jump in here. Um, once again, just wanted to point out that um, one of the goals of, of this session is to show how to um, to use the prototype data that um, NOAA EMC, EMC is putting up into the cloud so that um, more people have access to um, to those data and, and can use MetPlus um, to you know, dig into um, different phenomenon and how the model is performing with regards to those. Um, so, uh, so the besides the fact that there's like a just a, a tranche of, of data up there, um, specifically, um, I, I think that this is the best place for the community to get involved in the UFS and, and helping to identify how to improve it um, by looking at the prototypes. Yeah, there's really an amazing amount of data up there. Okay, um, so no questions have popped into into um, chat, and no one's raised their hand. So I guess at this point, why don't we dive right into just a little? Uh, oh, we have a question, Lydia. Perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thanks. Uh, I would <laughs> just: Do people typically use personal accounts, a personal AWS accounts for this, or work associated accounts? And how to avoid getting charged is my question. <laughs> um, that's a great question. So, no, people don't typically use personal accounts. Um, I use my personal account just to show you that it was free um, and it was easy to do, and you know you can do it on a small budget. But you know, most of the time, um, let's see if I have. I probably have, right? So this is um, this is my work AWS account, um, and yeah, I mean, it 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 all depends on, yeah, it depends on where you are. Like, if your company's doing this, um, or if you're, you know, a student on a very small budget, you know, both can be good. But I would say typically. Um, you don't use personal accounts to do it. Okay, thanks. Yep. 
So, um, and maybe part of where that question is coming from, Lydia, is just, just trying to understand um, how much it might cost. Um, so, uh, a couple of things. First off, NOAA, um, you know, does have its own um, cloud um, uh, instance, I guess, it, or, you know, it, it access into the cloud. Um, that, that you can work with, um, I just lost track of his name right now. Um, you, can, you can work with um, folks uh, at MDL, I think is, are the people who are managing the, the access to the cloud um, for NOAA. Um, and uh, for example, um, MEP Plus, when we ran this tutorial last um, winter in, um, you know, in 2021, 20, 20, into 2022, um, and we had like 40 or 50 instances up and people were using things off and on and, and we, you know, just kind of had them sitting there and everything. Um, I think the total amount of um, cost was, uh, I think it came to like um, $1,500 um, for 41 instances over a six month time period with people using things intermittently. And a lot of that is, it, 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 so it's fairly cheap. Um, and especially because MET Plus doesn't use a lot of um, compute resources. And as long as you're not trying to, um, you know, pull the data down or because um, it's the it's the data egress that, that costs the most money. Um, so, um, so, you know, if there's um, people um, like at universities that, you know, maybe have um, something built into their, their grant, you know, even like a, a couple of thousand dollars, built into a grant, they, they might be able to, um, you know, collaborate with EMC by, by using this type of a, of a scenario. Um, and, so. and yeah, and let me add, so right now, all of the, the, you know, formerly big data project data is free to use, mount, whatever. Um, so that won't cost you any, like Tara said, if you create data from that, it could cost a little to get it off of the EC2 instance, but um, hopefully not the time. So if I want to experiment with whether I can follow these steps, I'm better off, and, and I want to not uh, use any of my personal cash, uh, am I better off not doing it, going through EMC or going through like through um, work account? So for for this training um, period, um, feel free to, to use um, what uh, Hank has set up, um, we're covering the cost of, of people exploring um, with these instances. Um, correct, Hank? That's right. So, yeah. so, so this is this is built into the Met Plus um, training budget. So feel free to to go ahead and explore. Um, you know, but we'll and if you want us to leave this up, you know, over the the next um, six weeks um, while we're doing this one, and and you know the the next two sessions um that's fine we probably will shut them down you know kind of like at the end of may or something um if nothing else because um you know the the projects are and en are ending and i need to um you know close out these accounts and, and so forth but if you if you want to go ahead and, and use um the um the instance that has been set up for you to explore how to do this it's part of this training okay but setting up an instance on my own is probably not a good idea if i understand correctly yeah, I I probably recommend going through um, through Nimo, through the the MDL net. Thank yeah, you. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll add. It, it depends on how fast you want to get going. Okay, so um, you know, certainly if you just do an explore, all this stuff, it should be free. I've, I've I've tried to make sure it's free, but which and you can you know you can get going with your own EC2 instance, you know, in an hour, um, whereas you know maybe going through Nova might take quite a bit longer, but. Yeah, what Tara said, you know, starting the NOAA process or starting your institution process is is probably a good idea. Thanks. Sorry, and Krishna. Krishna. We, yeah, we've been leaving you hanging there. What what was your oh, question? No. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to remind folks about the NOAA, uh, you know, cloud HPC projects through the parallel works. So if you have uh, projects through parallel works, then you could really do all the work there. Just Right, and and you, there is there are resources available at this point, correct, Krishna? Like you, you, you're, um, there's a, a goal to burn out a certain number of resources, and and so there's, yeah, um, and yeah, no, no, uh, high performance computing, 
allocation committee has you know approved certain projects so there are a lot of uh, projects available uh, for example epic has you know cloud hours uh, under the epic project and others also have so we could technically use that yeah Okay, and then I just want to address, um, I'm watching the, the comments coming in here. Um, uh, first off, um, Bantuale, um, it looks like he's, he, they are asking if um, if we create an EC2 instance, do we need to link it to MET Plus or um, to the MET Plus or link after? I, once again, Hank, do you understand that question? Do you want to go ahead and, and just answer it in, um, in, in chat? You bet. Oh. And then, um, Sagar, um, once again, just uh, you're uh, you're stating that you believe that um, most people have Met Plus installed um, somewhere um, on their own supercomputers, which is true. A fair amount of people do have um, access to um, it on their supercomputers. This is, um, but however, you may not have the prototype data available on the supercomputer, and and you may you know to to download all of the. Um, uh, what it, uh, Lydia, or someone, please um, correct me. It's now called HR One. Um, just was just completed. I, I'm hoping that that's being put up into the cloud sometime soon. So if you don't have access to to that um, on your on your supercomputer, um, and you don't want to pull it down from the cloud and, and pay that egress, um, then this is a, um, a another option for you to be able to explore the data without having to to pull all that data down and store it on your own um, HPC. So, okay. Um, why don't we um, jump in really quick? Uh, I'm I'm gonna um, just introduce Gridstat really quick, Hank, and then um, if you can show how to run it. Yeah, and no being problem. now you uh, now I understand what you're struggling with, which is um, running, which is reading the era five data. Maybe what you could do, and I don't know if you have time while I'm I'm setting this up, or is to um, run um, the S um, S two S um, prototype. And just um, and analyze, you know, use the the zero hour um, for, uh, forecast basically um, as the analysis, just to show people how to run. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, I think so. And okay. maybe we'll do a, a live demo, which are always, um, you know, uh, always fraught with danger. <laughs> but um, yes, yeah. uh, but maybe it, it'll show people how to to debug and, things as well. Yeah, that sounds good. And as per usual, we're running a little bit behind, so we may not um, tackle everything that we wanted to tackle um, today. But let's see. Okay, so um, using GridStat to evaluate models. First off, I, I did want to just point out to you that um, uh, we have um, a lot of documentation about um, each one of the tools, and uh, as well as the Python wrappers around um, the tools. So, if you want to know all of the inner workings of GridStat and and how um, how to configure um, everything, um, you know, just to, to run it um, standalone, or you want to understand what, you know, some of the output um, in, uh, output um, information is and, and so forth, you can go to the, the MET um, user's guide and um, chapter 12 or section 12 is um, dedicated to the grid stat tool. Um, and you can kind of just see that there's, you know, this is like, less uh, probably just under half of, of what we have um in the user's guide there's you know many more um chapters underneath um with other tools and so forth and then um in the MetPlus user's guide um i had already um, talked about the use cases and um here's just a, a an example of going just into the tools you can see that there are three different examples of how to just um, set up and, and run GridStat in a, in a very basic example, just to get people started. And then once you know how to run the tool using um, the, the MetPlus wrappers, then you can start, um, you know, expanding on that. Um, and there's even examples of, of using Python embedding, which is a way to read in data sets that um, Met cannot um, easily read themselves, like the ERA-5, which um, once again, I thought, um, I thought we already had that working, but I'm I guess I was wrong. Um, and then um, also how to, to use um, uh, multiple um, config files um, for your, your um, running grid step. 
here's the wire diagram for MET. Um, and so what this does is it shows you like a, a general um, overview of all the different tools. In green are the reformatting tools. Um, in the lighter green are um, things that are used for quick look um, plotting. And, and so you can just make sure that your data is being read into MET uh, Plus properly. Um, and then the, the blue stack are the statistics tools and then the yellow stack are analysis tools. Um, so where we're, we're at right now is kind of at the core of, um, of MET um, it, with the, um, the, the tools that compute um, traditional statistics and, and also, um, you know, some neighborhood methods and, and so forth. So um, GridStat is, is what we're um, looking at right now. Here's just a really basic overview. Basically, GridStat is um, intended to um, compare gridded forecasts with gridded observations or analyses that have been put onto the same grid. And um, at this time, those have to be, you know, um, fairly standard projections. Um, we're working towards being able to handle um, more unstructured project, um, grids and, and so forth. Um, that's coming in the next um, six months to a year. Um, and then what it does is it accumulates the matched pairs over whatever the defined area is, um, like over the entire grid or over a, um, a region that has been masked out uh, and so forth. Um, and it does that over a single point in time. And then um, it uses those matched pairs to compute statistics that are, you know, bulk, um, you know, kind of aggregated over that entire region. Um, you can verify one or, or more variables and levels. Um, so you can configure it to, you know, um, you know, look across many different levels or many different variables. Um, and then you use the analysis tools in order to, um, you know, provide the aggregation through time or over, you know, spatial region, over masking regions and so forth. If you need more information on GridStat itself beyond this, I would suggest going back to the, um, the basic series and also look at the user's guide and, and the online tutorial. So um, the verification me methods that are included in here are um, continuous statistics, um, single and multi-categorical -categor um, statistics. Um, we do have the ability to turn on um, computing confidence intervals for, um, you know, the, the statistics that are computed um, at a single point in time, um, if that is something that's meaningful um, for you. Uh, we um, compute the partial sum so that you can store um, uh, the data in a, in a more compressed format than um, the full matched pair records um, so that um, a, a subset of statistics can be computed. Um, we do have um, methods for compu um, computing statistics for probabilistic forecasts that are in gridded um, formats. Um, and then things uh, like um, computing um, the economic cost loss value, um, uh, which is kind of more in the, the realm of probability. Um, we do have neighborhood verification methods. And um, in an effort to replicate um, some of the EMC um, VSDB capability, we have added in um, the ability to do um, Fourier decomposition on the, um, on the grid. Um, so you can look at the skill over different wavelengths. Um, and, and so, you know, kind of do a, a spatial um, separation. So... There is all of that information there. Um, and then I, I keep mentioning use cases. And basically um, what, what I mean is um, a, a suite of um, configuration files and sample data um, and you know, the documentation to, um, to basically get through at least um, a couple of steps of, of a particular um, flow of data. So here's a, a typical use case, um, something that uh, operational center might use on a routine basis, which is using GridStat to, um, to, you know, compute the statistics at a single point in time. That's output into an ASCII format um, that people can read and, you know, uh, it's partitioned. Um, and then um, say, for instance, they may want to um, load that into a database um, and then use, um, you know, something like a user interface um, with batch plotting capability um, to um, compute the, excuse me, to generate plots and make scorecards and, and all that kind of stuff. So um, for uh, what we're doing today, all we're going to do is, is look at this, um, this first part of it, which is setting up my plus to, to be able to, um, you know, read in the forecast and analysis files into GridStat, um, do the matching um, between the two, and then, um, you know, write out statistics.
um, using a, just a basic use case. So that is, um, you know, just the the um, introduction to GridStat. And then at this point, we were planning on having Hank demonstrate how to um, how to go ahead and and use um, AWS. My question is. We are an hour and 15 minutes in. Um, do we want to just keep plowing forward or do you want to take like a five or 10 minute um, break just to stretch your legs, use the facilities, get something to drink? <laughs> so you're three minute break, okay. Um, okay, so why don't we take, why don't we take um, a four minute break, uh, I guess three minute, Three minute break return at 15 minutes past the hour. So, and that, Hank, that gives you a couple more minutes to um, kind of get ready to do your demonstration. Yeah, that sounds good. I should, so John and Tina, I, I'm, I'm probably gonna ask for a little bit of help from you during this next live debugging. So I just thought I could give you a heads up. Okay, ben, Ben's asking for um, for four minutes. So yes, we why don't we go for like a full five minutes and return it 17 minutes after the hour. Let's be really precise. 17 minutes after the hour. Let's go. Have a nice break. See you in, a, in five. All right. Um, so we are at um, 17 after the hour. So uh, Hank, are you ready to jump in? Yeah. Uh, yep. I think I am. I will stop presenting and hand it back over to you. Just friendly reminder to um, make things big. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Make as big as I can. So, um, so I'm going to let me do um, let me do one basic thing. Um, Possibly many of you have already done this, um, but I will, I'd love to highlight our documentation. Um, so this is straight from the um, Met Plus documentation, um, and we are in the use cases, and this is a grid stat basic use case. Use case. So we're just going to go through this first, um, and then you will see um, my um, small failures with the um, big data project um, data, um, and uh, we can go from there. But so um, I really am just going to take it straight from this. Let me highlight a couple things. So one more bigger. Um, so again, I have logged into my EC2 instance as EC2 user. I am in the D1 Met Plus 5.0 tutorial directory. Um, I have several files that I've already copied over here to test, but we will just go through this um, that use case just to show you that it really is exactly how the documentation says. Um, there's the workflow. So. I am now going to look for this file. Um, I will show you a couple of shortcuts that I've already created. Um, this use cases, um, I guess, let me just demo this. But uh, So I created a system comp and it's got a, a couple things that um, are in this documentation that shows how to use them. Um, I've already put them in this file. We've got an output base, staging directory, a met installer, and an input base. And so um, <clears throat> this met installer is, is where um, is the key component for looking for this file. So if we do look in, um, then this directory, we will find this configuration file. Um, so we want to copy that. Actually, uh, we don't really need to copy it. So let's not copy it. Um, and now um, uh, one more note. Uh, I, 
I should organize my thoughts a little bit better, but this Met Plus 5.0.0 tutorial setup.sh comes with your EC2 instance. It also gets automatically loaded when you log in as the EC2 user. So um, all of these sort of directories and um, things that um, the tutorial assumes you need to set up or um, you know, possibly you need to set up should already be available to you in this EC2 instance because we're trying to make it as automatic as possible. Um, so um, I have, since I'm an EC2 user, I've already looked at that, which means um, I already have access to this run at plus.py, which is what we're about to use. Um, that is in the op directory. Um, it is in your path because um, we have sourced that to .sh file, um, and um, you can just use it from there. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Cigar. I'll try and uh, I will try and make my thoughts a little more um, direct. But you know what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is, um, so this is sort of the basic thing. Run met plus .py is how you run all of these use case examples, and it's in your path because um we've set it up so the ec2 user already has this so we are going to go um when you run that plus dot ui we are going to reference the system.conf that i have set up specifically with some paths the documentation will tell you how to do that and then we are going to um reference this file this yeah go ahead Tara. Hey, i think this is why julie just raised her hand there's um there's um comments in chat Let that people go. are not able to find run metplus.py that yeah uh, that is too bad huh. um they're not seeing uh, metplus.py oh uh yeah so it should be run met plus dot, dot pi, yeah. but it looks like um ben doesn't see that either uh that is unfortunate um so ben will you do a favor for me um Where let's see what might be happening. It looks like Ben just shared his environment in the chat with you. That is good. Can you specifically look for that Met Plus build base? Let's see. So in that met plus tutorial um directory ben if you look in the met plus tutorial to set up sh is there an export met plus build base and does it look like that ah okay so that's too bad i will um i will fix all of your ec2 instances that um it should look like opt met plus so for those of you who are, it's not working, if you can change your .sh script to look like this, and then. Okay, so Lydia is saying that she can find it um, because she did source the met plus 5.0.0 underscore tutorial, tutorial setup.sh first. Interesting. Um, all right, so that's, yeah, that's interesting. Well, I will, um, let's just say it, it sounds like there's, it's possible there's some issues with some of your EC2 instances. Um, if you can change that Met Plus build base to Optimet Plus and then source the tutorial again, that should fix it. Um, otherwise, you can do this directly. You can do Optimet Plus USH. 
run plus dot you can call that directly because that's where that that's where that file lives so make this too big um and the the purpose of that dot sh sourcing at dot sh is supposed to be so that um, it's in your path and you don't have to go look for it but that's where it lives so you can call it directly if you like so can sure. you can you copy when when you get done building this command? Can you copy it into um, chat really quick? You bet. Oh, that's not what I want. So that's. Yeah, and Lydia had a second, another question about, um, it appears that there are two setup um, scripts, one with a dash between MIP plus and, and 5.0.0, and, and one thank without. You. Yep, thank you, Lydia and Ben. I think that that's um, probably where the issue is. Um, so <laughs> probably the one without the dash is the one that got added later, and that's not the one that's getting sourced automatically. So um, thanks to both of you. Um, okay, so let's go back to grid stats. So that's, um, we did a couple things there. One, um, we're running a basic version of grid stat. Um, it is accessing um, data that is on the CC2 instance in the project D1 projects directory. You can look at these configuration files um, to see where the data is um and let's go see if we have some output um yeah so and then the other thing is that's doing is that you can run any of the tutorial use cases or any of i shouldn't say any of the use cases i have not put all of the use case data onto the onto the ami um because there's a lot of it so it's mostly tutorial data, but there is quite a, quite a few of the use cases that come with Met Plus that work automatically on this AC2 instance, but not all of them. All right, and then I think the data goes in. So in my... Um, System.conf, I did output base as D1 net plus dash 5.0 tutorial output. Um, and then in the conf the other configuration file, it says to then put it in, start with that directory and then put it in met tool wrapper. And then we have um, grid stat output directory. So we have this grid stat. We've got the date. And then you've got some um met output data formats um john do you want to describe briefly let, yeah go ahead tara yeah john can describe it and just if you can just leave this up for a minute so people can kind of see um what the directory structure looks like so they can navigate you, to it to it themselves you bet okay um so these are three different um ascii output files um, so all the tools in, in MET that end with the stat suffix like grid stat, point stat, um, they write an output ASCII file that has a dot stat suffix. Um, and ECLV and GRAD are two different line types. So each one of the um, ASCII output lines that um, that's generated by a MET tool um, has a set of common header columns. I think it's the tw first 24 columns are, are common to all the stat line types. And then the remaining columns vary based on the line type. So basically column 25 to the end for ECLV contains different information than the grad, the gradient uh, line type, column 25 to the end. And, but all the, the contents of all those line types are described in the user's guide. 
So the dot stat file has all of the output line types that grid stat was configured to write all lumped together. So basically it's a ragged array with differing number of columns based on the number of line types or based on the what, what uh, output lines were written. The underscore ECLV and grad files are, are just a duplication of that data that exists in the dot stat file. It's just that we've organized them separately by line type to make it easier for a human to read. So um, in general, when we're running things kind of uh, as efficiently as possible, we only write the dot stat file, and then we take that dot stat file and load it into a database. But if you want to, um, you know, run things and, you know, as a user, um, look at the results uh, and and have the comms line up nicely, then you can configure GridStat to write a separate output file for each line type and and inter inter interact with it that way. Thanks, Sean. Yep. All right, so there's okay. been, oh, go ahead, Tar. No, go ahead, Hank. I was just gonna say, maybe you wanna go back to the um, system conf and, and how to find where people have written out data and so forth. That's exactly where I was headed. Thank you. Um, yeah, so um, so the, the system.conf is a file I created on my own. Um, and let's just go back and look at it, things and point to things that are specific to me. Um, I think the, tu the tutorial definitely shows you how to set it up, um, kind of explains what to put in it. In fact, um, if we do, if we go, oops, if we go look at this grid stat use case, basic use case, it goes through the Met Plus configuration, which you is- You need to make it bigger. Oh yeah, sorry. About as big as it goes. It's unfortunate if that's as big as it goes. Oh, yeah, nope. oh, yeah that's really big. Bam. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go with that. <laughs> um, so, this basic use case in the documentation goes through the configuration file that are in the Met Plus area. Um, it describes all of the entries in there. I know I'm going through this fairly fast. And then towards at the end, um, it talks about this Met configuration. Um, actually, that's also a standard file that it's grabbing. Let me see if I can get down to the part. So then we have the running Met Plus, um, which it will then talk about this path to usersystem.conf. Um, and it will it says which things you absolutely have to have in the system.conf. Um, so you have to have at some point you need to tell Met Plus where these three things are. It is easiest to put them in a file and you can call it whatever you want. All of us seem to call it system.conf, which is why it ended up that way in the documentation. Um, but this is a file that you need to create yourself because it's specific to where you want to put things. The input base is probably something um, we could, you know, is standardized for these EC2 instances, but it's good for you to get used to the to finding out where your data is, assigning it to input base, and having your own system.conf um, that does what you want it to do. So these three things you need to um, put in and designate yourself. So um, would it be possible for you to copy and paste um, your system.conf into the, the chat um, so others can maybe copy and paste and, and um, set one up for themselves, um, knowing that they may need to, it? Actually, none of this is, looks like it's really all that specific to Hank Fisher. So. It, it's not. That's true. Um, yeah. And that way we also have it in the record in the chat so people can refer back to it. 
Done. Okay, um, so does that address people's questions? And do we want to take a moment so that um, people can get their system.com set up and, and then try and write, you know, run Gridstat? Go ahead, Cigar. Cigar. Yep. You are on mute. Um, yeah, so. No, yeah, I'm trying to follow. I think, uh, yeah, in, in the in my .conf file, there is only this output base and input base. I think which is the case for everyone. I don't know, but uh, so so is that uh, good enough for starting? You know, doing these test sessions, or do we do, do we can we also copy these um, these different settings that you just copied in the uh, comment? So I think. So the input base, I think you need one more. Um, I wish George were here, but I think so output and input base the way it has it in the the tutorial.conf is great. But I think you need this if you can see that on the screen. Um, but I okay. think you yeah, I think you need the met installer as well. Everything okay. else you, you don't need. Um, but oh, see, I and I forgot about Julie. So maybe Julie can correct or um, confirm. Sure. So the the Met installer, um, if you set it up for them such that you change the value of Met installer in the defaults.conf file, then they don't need it. But if you did not do that step, then yes, they do need to define it. Okay. That is Bottom good. line. Yeah. Bottom line, Dom says that he copied your system comp and it works fine. So if others wanted to do that for now, they can do that. <laughs> Thanks, Dom. Yeah, and the, and Dom, the the downside or maybe the good side on that is I've got log level debug, so you'll you'll see lots of uh, messages coming out, which you know can be positive. So, um, okay. Uh, good questions. Thank you, everybody. This is this is great. Um, so the yes. and the, yeah, go ahead. Tara. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you again. Um, no, I just no, want to make sure that um, Bantuale um, a while back said that he or that I uh, was still asking about um, questions about the data and um, what else? There was another question. I swear. <laughs> um, so I, I just want to make sure, Bantwali, are, are you, do you um, have any questions at this point or, or have we slowed down enough so you can kind of understand what we're um, looking at? Uh, I found them now. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, okay. so... And then Lydia, to... yeah, Lydia, did we ask, um, did we answer your question? We, we actually did just go through a use case um, and ran it. It went pretty okay, fast. Okay, I missed that part. Yeah, let me, so I, I, I copied the command in the chat, but let me just um, put this command line up and you can see um, what we did. So we are running the basic use case um oops. it's so big i keep clicking random files let's go so in, in the documentation we are running this basic um grid stat basic use case so that's what we're doing um and this is the command that we are um using to to uh run it so we've got we did our full path to run that plus.py just in case you don't have it in your system we specified the system.conf which has those two or three variables that we think we need in it so input base output base and meta install directory and then we're referring to this file which comes with the met plus use cases. Um, so when you 
install download met plus this is automatically going to be there um and then we hit enter um and then it gives you a lot of debug info um not super readable that's better in a log file but at the end it says met plus is successfully finished running and then when we went to that output directory and john talked about the line types that was the output from this command okay uh, thanks Ken. no problem and then um I, i'm sorry to interrupt you one more time <laughs> it interrupted no, much you and, and do it. no go ahead and do what you were gonna what you're gonna do oh i was just i i, I just thought we would take a quick quick look at this grid stat um configuration file, this Netflix configuration file, and I'll show you how I tried to adapt it for the big data project. So that that was it, Nora. Uh, no. It's in tight. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, I, I guess the, the a couple of points to make here. One is that this is set up um, just to run, you know, sample data. You can um, make a copy of this um, and then, um, you know, modify, for instance, the paths and the, um, the file naming templates and, and so forth to point to data um, that you want to evaluate um, on your system um so the just consider these to be examples of of how to set things up and then you can go ahead and start making minor modifications um to them to to customize it to your own data set um once again if if you want to know more information about um you know the templates and and all that kind of stuff they are in the, the met plus users guide and we also have um, several sessions um, in the the basic training series that are focused in on how to um, you know work your way through um, the metplus.com files and and you know what what you can change and and how you can control um, the timing on things and, and so forth um, so that's that's outside the scope of, of this particular um, advanced series um, but uh, you know at least you're you're seeing the basics and, and um, maybe this is pointing you to what you want to um, to learn about um, through going back to the, the more basic training series. Um, can you also just, Hank, really quickly bring up um, the the running of the use case again? Just the command. Um, in the, like, yeah. Yeah, like just hit up. This? Yeah, no, that one, perfect. Um, the other thing that I, I, I think we should probably point out just for clarity, is that um, the dash C um, on these command lines, basically that's saying, you know, we're passing in a configuration file, but you can have, um, this example has two, but you can have like many different configuration files that you pass in. And in essence, um, what it does is it, uh, what's passed in um, later in the, the command winds up overwriting what is earlier in the command. Um, and to see what um, the final configuration looks like. Um, you know, there is a, a final uh, metplus.conf um, file that is, is written into the, um, into the uh, logging area um, so that you can, you can see that. But what that does is it allows you to um, possibly pass around um, a lot of the configuration um, from one um, user to another and then maybe just um, handle where the, the data are written out, um, you know, through the system.conf um, file. Um, so, Julie. Yeah, I don't want to confuse folks more, but I just wanted to mention that um, the dash C, the actual dash C itself is no longer required. So there may be, I believe there is some documentation that has it and some that doesn't. So if people see that in the documentation, know that we have it planned to do a sweep of the documentation to remove those, um, but it's not actually required to put the dash C in before the config file name. I had forgotten that, thank you. Clearly me too. Actually, I didn't forget that, but I was just I was just trying to follow along with what uh, this uh, use case did. So, yeah. Um, yep. So, Sagar, so, um, just really quickly, uh, I see you're you're having an error because you um, uh, have configuration um, where you set met installer um, to path two. Um, 
what needs to be done is you need to set um, the path to uh, where you want to write things. So if you're trying to run right now, I would suggest maybe copying um, Hank's um, uh, entries into the .conf um, file. He, he put that in the chat and, and go from there um, rather than trying to start from scratch. Okay, so Ben is saying he would very much like to see how you um, went through adapting the use case to different data and what kinds of errors it is producing. Yeah, so this is this is um, this is what we've all been leading up to, which is great um, and exactly what we wanted to do. And so, um, I, Ben, I will share my workflow with you. So, what I did, if you can, um, if you can see this directory is I copied two files. I copied one of the GFS files um, and one of the ERA5 files to this directory so that I could run GridStat directly to begin with. Um, I like doing that. I like like running the met basic things first just to see that I have the, the data sort of lined up and I know what I'm doing with it. And then I start working on met plus configuration files. So I will um, let's run this first. Um, I already know it's not going to work um, because I I don't understand something about the um, ERA five files. Um, but um, we'll run through this, and then I will show you how I started working on the grid stats, the the Met Plus configuration file to point directly to the um, big data project directories um, for a more useful case. So. Let's just um, do this first. Um, so I am using this, um, just run the command. And, and just um, so while you're typing that, um, this will be the end of, of the tutorial is, is as far as you can get um, yep. on this demonstration. So this command that I just ran, Ben, um, it is directly using GridStat. And if you go to the GridStat documentation, what it wants is the forecast file first, it wants the observation file second, and then it wants this configuration file last. So let's just take a quick look at the um, config file. So this config file default, I grabbed directly from the met install, um, and I changed some things. So I changed that to GFS, um, that doesn't necessarily um, have an impact on reading the data, but it will for output. Um, and then the other thing that I added, um, based on some um, direction from John, is this OBS field. So I am I um, went and looked in the NetCDF. This is the variable inside the NetCDF. So I'm trying to tell this configuration file that's what I want. I want all levels. Um, and I'm also trying to tell it that it may not be a CF compliant file or it may not understand that, but it is a net CDF. John, does that mean it is not a CF compliant file, that net CDF and CCF? Hank, um, can we do an, an NC header dump on the file and look at what's in there? Okay. So this is a uh, so you you were right to use the precipitation amount uh, one hour accumulation, um, but notice that it has three different dimensions: time and lat and long. So when you see those that star comma star stuff in the ah. configuration, the the stars go in the dimensions that represent the grid and variable. So based usually almost always that is you know they're named lat and long, although they don't necessarily have to be. So we should have, we need to specify some dimension for time. So note here that there are 744 times in this file. Like if you look at uh, at the very top of Hank's screen, you see that the time one dimension has seven, is size 744. Um, so I don't know. It's a full month. It's a full month, okay. And these are, well, let's, let, so let's go into your config file again um, and edit it. And one other side note, Hank, um, when you're copying over the default, I'd recommend renaming it to something other than default yeah. just to avoid confusing yourself later. So in the level string, oh, I, I'm sorry, while we were looking at the NetCF file, I should have also noted 
that there was nothing in the glo in the um, in the global variables or the global attribute section that identified this as being a net CF or a CF compliant file. Um, if it if there was, what you're looking for is a global attribute named conventions that says CF dash something to identify it as being a a, a a net CF file that follows a climate forecast convention. That was not there. So that's why we're adding this file type equals net CF NCCF. We're kind of manually telling Met to interpret that net CF file that we're reading as if it were a CF compliant file. And we'll keep our fingers crossed. When you're working with regular lat lawn data, um, then that, that often works just fine. So Hank, here in the level string, we need to add another entry. And we could add, um, we could add an integer. And if we add an integer, that would that would tell Met the zero-based index of the dimension to be used. But we have a much more user-friendly way of doing it now. And we can actually provide a string to identify the timestamp that we want to use. So before the star comma star, Hank, please put in um, an at symbol and then some time string in year, month, day. Well, now we need to know what the actual time values are in that file. I already know. I got it. Uh, year, month, day. Okay. And so then yep. if you did that, then I think by default, it'll just use zero Z of that day. Okay. Or um, the zero hour. So yeah, okay. we could give this a shot. See how this okay. goes. Well, I sure hope this works. That'd be cool if it totally did. Yeah. Same problem. Yeah. So do we know... Uh, Go ahead. Do we know that the um, does that that file lives in this directory, this current working directory? Yes. And the time and the variable name is correct. Yeah, I cut and pasted, so I made sure it was right. Okay. Yeah. The next step is um, writing Met Plus discussions to say, "Hey, I expect this plan <laughs> to work. Here's some sample data. It's not working as expected. Do you have any suggestions?" Which I will actually do because um, I think this is uh, important and key to try and get this big data project working. And, I, and I've sort of got it 80% working a couple of times. But so, Ben, I just wanted to show you my workflow. So let's assume that we got this working um, and we know that GridStat works on both of those files. But then my next step is. I'm going to create a um, a Met Plus configuration file to run Met Plus so that I can have a, a lot more options um, and loop through times. So this particular Met Plus configuration file is an exact copy of that, not an exact, it's a copy um, with some modifications of that base grid stat case. And so it's all the same. And what I did is I went through and these commented out are from the base case. And then what I did was I changed the directories um, and I can either put this in a slide or make this available somehow so you can see. But the first thing that I do is make sure that I, I can now read the file with this Met Plus configuration file. So. I give it a directory where it's starting, and then we start doing these um, template type directives so that we can loop through more than one of these files. Um, and this is, so yeah, so, so, so that's the workflow is first get the directories working, make sure grid set works, start looking in these directories. I do the same thing for the observations. Um, and then for this basic grid stat case, I just kept everything the same. I changed these two things um, for GFS and ERA5. I kept just about everything else the same. This, right, because this was in the NetCDF file as the variable, um, I added this. I will, now that we've talked with John, um, have to go back and put in, modify this level so these three things you'll notice are very similar from that grids stat default config file. Um, 
Met Plus uses the same things, and so you can tweak them in the same way, and they're roughly the same format. Um, so that is sort of the very brief, because um, we're running out a little bit of time, um, workflow that I use. And I almost always, and I suspect we all do too, we, we the engineers and the scientists have spent a lot of effort creating these configuration files and use case files. And I think all of us pretty much grab one that's close to what we want to do and then modify it from there. It, it's really the easiest way to do it. So, um, you know, when all of you start doing your own work, these, these use cases are super valuable for examples to get started. And um, even us, on the development team tend to work that way. Um, so yeah, so we're, you know, we only have a few minutes left. Um, ben, did that at least give you a starting point or taste of, of how we do it? And I, and I will certainly um, find a way to make these, you know, modifications available. So um, you just went through the workflow. Um, and yes, we only have a, a couple minutes left. I feel like we just got to the, the crux of where we want to get to. So I'm, I'm trying to determine how to proceed. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so the, the question is, um, do we want to, uh, you know, spend another 15 minutes and you can just kind of run through a little bit more and, you know, we'll keep the recording going and people can refer back to it or being you have already prepared um, a lot of this, um, would, would it make sense to maybe um, throw on a, a one hour session next Wednesday to kind of wrap this up so that we can get people from you know, beginning to end. Um, I'm, I'm open to hearing people's suggestions because we, we want to make this useful. We don't want to, you know, leave people hanging. Hank, what's your, what's your thoughts on this being you're the, you're the one who's going to be on the, um, on the hook. Yeah. So I, um, I like, I like cigar cigars, um, I think I would vote for a next Wednesday one hour or, you know, even, you know, before one of Tina's, you know, some fitted in somewhere um, where we have a, a Met plus configuration file that um, works with the big data project. It doesn't have to be fancy, but at least, um, you know, we can give an example um, that it can be run on the EC2 instance. So, that probably won't happen in the next 15 minutes. Okay. So I would propose that we put uh, another meeting on people's calendars. Um, if you can make it great, if you can't, um, we will get it recorded um, and we'll, we'll have a one hour session starting um, at the same time as what we did today. So starting at 9 a.m. Uh, Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time, and I, I think it's 1600 UTC, if I remember. Um, and uh, we, we will finish off um, this, this particular series. Um, that also gives people some time to go back, review what we've done here, play around with things. And um, if things still aren't working by the time we get um, back to a, a um, virtual session next week, um, you know, reach out to us, um, hopefully um, before that session so that we can try and, and help you debug um, beforehand. So does that sound agreeable? Yeah, it works for me. Um, Lydia is asking, in, in the meantime, will the user at IP address remain um, open for us to use? So I will, I will put a, maybe a request in for those who want your um, EC2 instance to stay up, if you could email me, that would be great. Just um, it, it it isn't costing us a lot, but it's just, it's good to know like who still wants to be using it. But if, so if you still want it up, it's not a problem, but if you would just email me, that would be great. 
Okay, and then Julie also put in the chat the link to discussion so that it, as you're running through this, if you run into problems, please send your um, your request for help um, through discussions because then our team of, um, of support can help. If you send it to me, first thing I'm going to do is either copy it into session um, discussions or you know send it on to someone else. Um, so just go into the d discussions um, because if you're if you're running into a problem, maybe someone else is, and maybe you can just search and, and find the answer, or you can help someone else as well. Okay, so thank you for your time and attention. Um, I you know I, I kind of feel like I, we should apologize that we ran into some problems, but in some ways I, I don't um, feel too bad because I think that this is it's good to see the the process. Um, and I also want to point out that um, right now we were expecting to have additional funds available to us that have not come in yet. So all of this is is pretty much um, being um, provided on, on a very, very stretched nickel and dime um, uh, set of funding. So it's I probably um, due to that, it's, it's not quite as, um, as smooth as what we were hoping for. But anyway, thank you for your time and attention and we will see everyone who can come back next week um, at the same beginning time and hopefully just do one hour. So thanks. Sarah? Yes. Someone is asking about um, a follow-up session for next week and what was the day? Okay, I see Wednesday post, or Hank posted Wednesday. Just wanna make sure that's accurate since a couple of people have that same question. Yeah, so Wednesday, um, what is that, the 26th? Yeah. 9 a.m. Is that right? Wednesday, the 26th, 9 a.m. Mountain, oh, 11, a, 11 a.m. Eastern, um, 1600 UTC. 9 a.m., not 10 a.m. Yep. I'll correct that. And we'll, um, we will be uh, sending out a calendar invite for that. Look for that from Lisa, um, Lisa Goodrich. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to stop recording. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming. You're welcome. Thanks for the attention and, and, and the debugging and the help. We appreciate it. Pleasure.